Oh, what's this? For me? Huh. Aww. <laughs> the honest truth is that most millionaires lead very boring lives. They don't spend $1,500 to have their hat fly first class from London to Italy. They don't spend $33,000 in a specially designed 24 karat gold iPhone. And they don't go around dropping $200,000 for a ticket to space. No, contrary to popular beliefs, most millionaires' lives are actually quite boring. To a point that you start to wonder if some of the ordinary looking people you know around you are millionaires. So in salute to living a boring but rich life, let me share with you 12 boring traits of actual millionaires. And hi, if you're new to China, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. The number one trait of a boring millionaire, they wake up at a reasonable time. There's a perception that in order to be successful, we need to wake up at 3 a.m., do 500 push-ups before sunrise, and have conquered the world before 6 a.m. Apparently, Dwayne Johnson wakes up at 3.30 a.m. for his morning workout. Tim Cook at Apple wakes up at 3.45 a.m. to get a head start on email. And even Mark Wahlberg, the former rapper Marky Mark, wakes up at 4 a.m. to start his morning prayer. Well, sorry to pop your bubble, but studies have actually found that there is no significant correlation between the time one wakes up in the morning and one's wealth. According to Dr. Thomas Stanley's book, The Millionaire Mind, the typical millionaire actually wakes up each workday around 6.40 a.m. The median time is around 6.25 a.m. Only about 1 in 5 rises before 5.40 a.m. The honest truth is that wealth is not a result of when we wake up, but how we maximize the time that we are awake. It doesn't matter if you're waking up at 4 a.m. every morning, if you aren't using that time to grow yourself, your career, and your wealth. You're just sacrificing precious sleep for no good reason. It would actually serve you much better to wake up at a reasonable time after a good 7-8 to eight hours of sleep, rather than to wake up in the wee hours of morning in an attempt to mimic Dwayne Johnson or Mark Wahlberg. And while we're talking about Mark Wahlberg, just because he wakes up at 4 a.m. doesn't mean he isn't sleeping well. Mark has stated in interviews that he actually goes to bed around 7.30 p.m. so he can get 8 hours of quality sleep. The bottom line is this. If you aren't a super early morning person, no need to try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Wake up at a reasonable time that is best for you. If that's 5 a.m., perfectly fine. But if it is 7 a.m., there is no need to feel guilty. Maximize the time that you have throughout the day and don't get hung up on when you start your day. The number two trait of being a boring millionaire they perceive and approach their career as a labor of love. It is not work, it is a labor of love. Again, it's easy to believe that millionaires approach work and career from a purely financial perspective, selecting careers with the highest pay, maximum financial return, and greatest growth potential. However, another honest truth is that your ability to sustain a career for a long period of time will have a greater impact on your wealth than the immediate pay today. What's the point of taking on a job that pays you six figures straight out of college, but if you hate it and you burn out after just one year? It is much better to pursue a career that might pay you half that, but you learn to love it, thus being able to sustain it for the next 10 years. In addition, this will not only enable you to save more money, but have a higher quality of life satisfaction. Because let's be honest, in the end, that is what matters, right? So though financial compensation may be important, don't let that be the primary driver in selecting your career. Consider how it aligns with what you want to do, how you want to spend your time, if you can sustain it for a long period. Millionaires love their careers. The number three trait of a boring millionaire they operate what many would consider dull businesses. Many of the types of businesses we're in could be classified as dull normal. We are welding contractors, auctioneers, rice farmers, owners of mobile home parks, pest controllers, coin and stamp dealers, and paving contractors. It's easy to jump to the conclusion that because millionaires love their career, they must all be doing very exciting things in exciting fields, right? Running tech startups, living the glorious lives as social media influencers, and being listed on Forbes coveted list 30 under 30. However, again, the reality reflects otherwise. Many find success in businesses and careers that would be considered dull or boring. In 2004, two professors from INSEAD, Chan Kim and Renee Moborn, wrote a book titled The Blue Ocean Strategy. The basic argument of this book was that companies should pursue the blue oceans, unexplored new markets, if they want to create value and make the competition irrelevant. Essentially, refrain from jumping into red oceans, the known market space where there is tons of competition. You're competing with everyone and everybody, thus your chances of success are diminished. I'm not sure if the millionaire surveyed a millionaire next door read this book, but this essentially is a strategy that many of them followed with their careers. Instead of jumping into the most popular and thus competitive markets, they created their own blue oceans by building quality businesses in boring and less competitive markets. These days and age, we all want to be known as tech entrepreneurs. But how many of us would want to be known as the owner of a pest control company? Or the distributor of donut making machines? Probably not our first choice, right? But what if they would give you a greater chance of building wealth? Would you think twice then? A quick interruption. For a limited time, I'll be opening up my calendar for one-on-one -on -one money coaching sessions. A time where you can connect with me directly, as well as receive personalized money coaching. The money journey is already hard, so sometimes you just want to get some unbiased feedback without judgment. If you think this could be a value add to your financial journey, please go to my website to learn more.
I'll also have a link in the description below. All right, with that said, let's get back to the video. The number four trait of a boring millionaire, they marry and they remain married. And to one person for a long period of time. The typical millionaire couple in America has been married for 28 years. One in four have been married for 38 years or more. Elon Musk is currently the richest person in the world. With his ownership stakes in Tesla and SpaceX, he's currently worth over $200 billion. That is a lot of money. And to go with a lot of money, he's also been married and divorced a lot of times. Officially married and divorced three times. So seeing someone like Elon Musk, it's easy to assume that there is no correlation between how many times a person has been married and divorced to his or her net worth. However, someone like Elon Musk is not representative of most people. And definitely not most millionaires. Divorce is one of the quickest ways to financial downfall. Emotional turmoil aside, not only do many couples need to split their money, they lose a lot through legal fees, admin costs, excess living costs, alimony, and child support. Bottom line, divorce is very expensive. Marriage may not be for everyone, but if it is something you want to embark on, be very thoughtful. There is a highly significant negative correlation between divorce and wealth. And conversely, there is a high significant relationship between years of uninterrupted marriage and net worth. The number five trait of a boring millionaire. Majority of them attend their local public state universities for their college education. The fact is that most millionaires do attend college. According to the Millionaire Next Door, 80% of millionaires are college graduates. However, that doesn't mean they attend prestigious private schools. According to a Dave Ramsey survey of 10,000 millionaires, almost two thirds of millionaires graduated from public state schools, while only 8% went to a prestigious private school. In today's ultra competitive work and education landscape, we have a tendency to glorify highly selective colleges. When someone says they went to an elite institution like Harvard or MIT, we automatically give that person the benefit of the doubt. Oh, she is so smart. Wow, he must be a genius. Yeah, she'll definitely become a millionaire one day. Now, we don't want to discount that individual's hard work because it's ridiculously hard to get into one of these institutions. We just want to be careful that we're not discounting everybody else because we're placing so much spotlight on these elite institutions. The fact is that based on numbers alone, the majority of individuals graduating from colleges have and will graduate from large public institutions, not elite private colleges. Just look at the total number of undergraduate enrollment at selected private colleges versus public universities. Stanford, with an admission rate just shy of 4%, has a total undergraduate student body of less than 8,000 students. Harvard, slightly over 7,000. MIT, less than 5,000. Compare that with some major public universities. Penn State University, over 40,000 undergraduate students. Texas A&M, 57,000 students, or my alma mater, UC Irvine, 29,000 students. I'm not here to argue that public is better than private or private is better than public. That's a whole other account of worms I'm not going to open here. Rather to say that the path to wealth, the path to becoming a millionaire, isn't only reserved for the select few that attend elite private institutions. It's open to any one of us as long as we're willing to put in the work. The number six trait of a boring millionaire, they invest in their 401k. That's right, the very boring tax advantage 401k account. Again, it's easy to assume that the wealthy invest in sexy alternative investments. You know those things that we hear on the internet? Cannabis stock, Dogecoin, or how about collateralized high yield leverage swaps? I made that last one up, but it sounds convincing when you use all those fancy words, right? Contrary to these fancy sounding investments, the fact is that many millionaires build their wealth through very boring, tried and true accounts like the 401k. According to a Dave Ramsey survey of millionaires, eight out of 10 millionaires invest in their company's 401k plan. When I talk to people about money investing, it's common to see many people get excited about the latest hot company they've been following or the hot investments they've heard from their friends. And this isn't because this person is not intelligent or level-headed. It's because there's so much misinformation and noise out there, it's hard to distinguish the quality information from everything else. There's always so much hype about new and better ways to make money. Be very careful of such hypes. Most often, the best vehicle to build wealth is right under our nose, the 401k. And if you're looking to know what to put into your 401k, Look no further than a simple, low-cost, broad market index fund that tracks either the total market or the S&P 500. I have a whole video where I delve deeper into index funds, so I'll have a link to that video in the description below. The number seven trait of a boring millionaire, their cheap dates. Again, based on the internet and the media, we think we need to spend money to have fun. We have to rent a private boat, get pricey concert tickets, and book a penthouse overlooking the city. However, fun is subjective. Whether you're rich or not, the best things in life are free or close to it. If we're intentional, it doesn't cost much money to entertain friends, spend quality time with our family, and walk through the park. Most millionaires surveyed in Dr. Thomas Stanley's book emphasize the importance of their relationship with family and friends. Though money was important to them, the ability to spend time with family and friends were even more important. Thus, activities didn't have to be activity-centric. Rather, they were people-centric. And if we're smart about it, we don't have to spend a lot of money to spend quality time with people we care about. The number eight trait of a boring millionaire. They study money. And not only because they want to build wealth, no, they do it for fun. In the Millionaire Mind Survey, 
The millionaires listed planning investments and studying investment opportunities as number three and number four lifestyle activities they do outside of work. I know, sounds like a pretty boring person, right? But probably also the reason they're millionaires. Millionaires are extraordinarily successful at producing high income and accumulating wealth. Activities that directly relate to these goals, like planning investments and consulting with advisors, normally make up a large part of their activity list. So if you're already watching videos like this, reading personal finance blogs and books, you're already well into your way to becoming a boring millionaire. So congratulations. Just don't expect to be invited to cool parties anytime soon. The number nine trait of a boring millionaire. They're financially self-sufficient, but not stupid. What do I mean by this? Let me explain. I've known people who look down at things offered for free, thinking that it is only for the poor. I'm not talking about free samples at the mall, but when someone is genuinely offering something for free with the intention of providing value, insecure individuals would wave off free offers with statements like this. I have money. I can buy it. I don't need you to give me stuff. I know this too well because I used to be one of them. And the worst part was that I thought and acted like this when I had the least amount of money. The truly wealthy are securing themselves enough to not only accept something when offered, they gladly take it. Millionaires who came to Dr. Thomas Stanley's study said this during their interview. Why else would I spend two or three hours being personally interviewed by these authors? They paid me. They had money. And everyone knew that they had money. Yet they were confident enough to not care what anyone else thought. They liked that they were being paid, even if it was one dollar or a few hundred dollars. So they gladly accepted it and didn't let their pride get in the way. The number 10 trait of a boring millionaire. They drive boring cars. Think Toyota, Ford, and Hondas. According to a 2022 study by Experian Automotive, Contrary to mainstream beliefs, many wealthy individuals simply do not drive fancy cars. The study found that of people with household income of more than $250,000, 61% didn't drive luxury brands. Their cars of choice were these, Toyotas, Fords, Hondas, and Subaru was number five on the list. FYI, I'm a proud owner of a Subaru Crosstrack. Now I know income isn't a reflection of someone's true wealth, but this study does provide us with some data points. So next time you're at a red light, and you see a Lamborghini stop right next to you, just know that there is a good chance that individual might not actually be wealthy. Now that guy driving the Subaru Crosstrack, who knows, right? The number 11 trait of a boring millionaire, they stay put. And if they move, they move slowly. In my 20s, I moved close to 10 times across multiple cities, states, and even countries. And while it was exciting, it was also exhausting. When you're constantly moving, there is a cost. You're not staying at the same job for a long period of time. You're not building a network in one area. And if you own a home, you're not giving it enough time to build equity. Thus, most millionaires actually have a tendency to stay put. Most of us have the same old fashioned orientation. We buy homes and tend to hold on to them for a long periods of time. Of all the millionaires surveyed in the millionaire mind, more than 50% had not moved even once in the past 10 years. Contrast that with an average American who moves at least once every five years. Moving may not be in our control at all times, but be aware of the cost of moving. Also, it's good to know that when you stay put for a bit longer, it could help with your wealth building. The number 12 trait of a boring millionaire. This one I most admire about the boring millionaire. They've essentially mastered the art of not caring what other people think. When you're trying to forge your own pathway, you will naturally attract criticism. Success may inspire some, but a lot of times surface more naysayers. However, what millionaires have mastered is the ability to essentially neutralize criticism. Ignoring criticism of detractors is a significant correlate of economic success and career achievements. They don't care what other people think of their decisions. Their decision to enter into a career field that isn't considered sexy. Their decision to invest in very boring index funds within their 401k. Their decision to essentially live a very boring life, being a cheap date, reading about money during their downtime, and driving a Subaru Crosstrack. Millionaires could care less what anyone think about their lifestyle because they're pursuing a lifestyle that is congruent with their values and goals, and that is what matters. Thank you guys for watching. In the line of not caring what other people think, if you'd like to learn some things that you shouldn't be doing with money, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.